is Elon Musk's SpaceX about to go bankrupt? An internal email he sent out seems to indicate that might be the case, but not so fast. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $2,300. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I am super busy these days. I'm actually at a charging station <laughs> getting a charge, so I figured I'd do a quick video here. Sorry about, I know there's kind of like a little bit of a whine in the background from the uh, uh, supercharger charging up the battery. Anyway, forgive me for that. I just wanted to get this video out. I've had a ton of people ask me about this, and so I figured I would do a video. There have been several other videos about this topic, but I thought at least I could bring my own perspective to it. Essentially, this all comes from a Space Explored article which found a leaked email from Elon, and I'm reading it off my laptop over to the side, so forgive me if I'm looking a little bit different. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read the entire email from Elon Musk first. And then we will talk about that a little bit. So I will put up a picture of this, of course, in the meantime. All right, so here's the email. And this was just before Thanksgiving, so last week in the US, last week was Thanksgiving, so just before that. So here's the email. Unfortunately, the Raptor production crisis is much worse than it seemed a few weeks ago. As we have dug into the issues following the exiting of prior senior management, they have unfortunately turned out to be far more severe than was reported. There is no way to sugarcoat this. I was going to take this weekend off as my first weekend in a long time, and remember this was Thanksgiving weekend, but instead I will be on the Raptor line all night and through the weekend. Unless you have critical family matters or cannot physically return to Hawthorne, we will need all hands on deck to recover from what is, quite frankly, a disaster. The consequences for SpaceX, if we cannot get enough reliable Raptors made, is that we then can't fly Starship, which means we then can't fly Starlink Satellite V2. Falcon has neither the volume nor the mass to orbit needed for Satellite V2. Satellite V1 by itself is financially weak, while V2 is strong. In addition, we are spooling up terminal production to several million units per year, which will consume massive capital, assuming that Satellite V2 will be on orbit to handle the bandwidth demand. What this comes down to is that we face a genuine risk of bankruptcy if we can't achieve a Starship flight rate of at least once every two weeks next year. Thanks, Elon. All right, there's a lot to unpack there, but before we continue, I actually want to show you a tweet that Elon put out yesterday, in fact, <laughs> as I'm recording this. I guess it'll be two days ago from when you see this video. But anyway, the tweet was, if a severe global recession were to dry up capital availability slash liquidity while SpaceX was losing billions on Starlink and Starship, then bankruptcy, while still unlikely, is not impossible. GM and Chrysler went bankrupt last recession. Quote, only the paranoid survive. So yeah, so that tweet indicates that things may not be quite as urgent <laughs> as what Elon said in the email. In the email, it seemed like all doom and gloom. The tweet is a little bit more, I guess, balanced or measured. Um, I have certainly talked about in the past uh, definitely on Discord with other patrons and etc. But I think I've also put it in some videos in the past that with Starship production, Tesla is really taking a chance because they are burning through an amazing amount of capital by putting together not just the Starship prototypes, but also uh, the Boca Chica, you know, the entire spaceport that they're doing down there is an incredibly expensive endeavor. And so SpaceX is definitely losing money at this point on all of this, right? They're making money on Falcon because they've figured out how to do that. That's kind of their workhorse. They're launching flights. They're making profits. And, you know, congratulations again on the DART mission launch. That was really fantastic on SpaceX's part. So that's a real tried and true rocket, and things are going great for SpaceX on that front. But the Starship and also Starlink are really big money losers at this point. So they've got a profit bucket, and they've got a really big loss bucket. They are not a publicly traded company, so they have no requirement to display their earnings to the rest of the world. But there are even some theories that it's potentially that Elon Musk is selling some of the shares that he's selling right now, not just for tax purposes, but also to cover some of the costs or potential costs of SpaceX. Uh, and that's certainly his right to do so, right? He can certainly invest a billion dollars or $2 billion if he feels like it. But anyway, things are not, you know, super rosy. Like with Tesla a few years ago, and the reason I titled this video Production Hell 2.0 is because this is just like Tesla in 2017-18 when they were trying to ramp up production of the Model 
Total 3, and they were having a hell of a time doing that. They needed to get to a point where they could, you know, stamp these things out and produce them very, very rapidly, and they couldn't figure out how to do that for a long time, and they came literally ba weeks away from going bankrupt. So that's kind of where they were. I don't think SpaceX is in that position because they have you know, as opposed to just having a few Model S's and Model X's that were going out the door to generate cash, the Falcon Heavy is actually quite profitable and is launching at a reasonably regular cadence, although it has kind of slowed down this year as well. I've also noticed that Starlink launches have slowed down as well. So all of these kind of things indicate that, that SpaceX is not perhaps as financially healthy as a lot of people have been giving it credit for. I've been kind of worried about that myself. Not because, again, I own stock because it's a private company, so I really can't own stock in the company, but because I really, really value their mission and I think they're the most forward-looking group that's trying to launch into space and certainly go to the moon and go to Mars. Those are really huge ambitions and I very much support those and I want SpaceX to be very successful, but I've been worried about their financial situation for a while. And this Raptor thing kind of brings it all to a head. Essentially, if you've looked back over time, Elon Musk has tweeted about this, so it's not exactly unknown knowledge, but basically the Starlink terminals themselves were costing SpaceX around $1,000 a piece to create. I think, especially with the new rectangular format that they've got, that they've probably figured out how to do it more or less at cost. So let's say they're breaking even on that, maybe losing a tiny bit of money per one. And certainly if they spool up production, like Elon said in the email, to a couple of million per year, we're going to be talking about economies of scale so the cost is going to come down so eventually they may make a small amount of money on the terminal but that's not where they're making most of their money where they're making most of their money is in the actual subscriptions right you're paying 99 dollars a month or whatever it is in other parts of the world. So that's what you're paying and SpaceX is getting recurring revenue out of that. But in order to do that, they have had to launch all of these satellites into space. They have to maintain these satellites and the satellites, of course, also have to function and they have to do what they need to do. So what Elon is saying in the email that he sent out is that the version one of these satellites is not particularly profitable. It's not a huge surprise, but it is a little bit surprising to me. I kind of figured that there was the loss in the launch, of course, and that was gonna cost them money. But but that they, they were profitable enough as they operated currently in order to turn a reasonable profit from what they're getting. And of course they would be losing money because they're still building out the satellite constellation and they're losing money on the terminals themselves. So it would take a while to recoup, but it sounds like that might not particularly be the case right now. And I honestly think it's mostly related to the fact that SpaceX doesn't have laser communication between the satellites. And so I think version two, the big difference between version one and version two, and maybe some other things too, but, but anyway, I think the big difference is that the satellites will actually be able to communicate with each other via laser in space, as opposed to what happens right now is you send out your signal, right? You send, I don't know, I want a movie on, on Netflix or something. You send out the request, it goes to the satellite. Satellite then bounces it down someplace else, maybe bounces it back up to another satellite and back down again, gets to Netflix, like, you know, headquarters. They then go like, oh, okay, you want to stream some video or something, and then they send it back the same way. If it's bouncing up and down, that costs SpaceX because they have to pay for those ground transmissions and the transmission between the different elements, right? So they're paying for all of the internet that's not their own, which means that it costs them a lot of money, so it's not particularly profitable, apparently. Again, I don't have inside information, but this is, to the best of my knowledge, what's going on with that. So what they need is they need version 2.0 of their satellites because what they do is you say, I want a movie off Netflix. It goes, Doom, and it sends it up to the satellite, which then bounces it through laser communication to all these other satellites, which then goes down to the ground station and asks for it. So they're avoiding all this bouncing up and down and having to pay for all of that stuff as well. Also, probably these things are more efficient. They probably have bigger bandwidth. So there's a lot of places where they will become more profitable than version one of the satellites. Again, I don't have all the information about what differentiates exactly version two from version one, but those seem to be the things. But the big thing and the big kind of revelation in the email, and let me go check on this again just to make sure I've got this right, is as Elon says, they can't fly Starlink Satellite V2 on the Falcon or the Falcon Heavy right now. So that indicates obviously they can. You can put a single one on there, but they can't launch enough of them because they're heavy and more bulky. They can't launch enough of them to make sense on these launches. 
So they actually need the Starship. And that's a little bit of a worrying sign to me because essentially what they've been doing in the past is they've been saying like Starship is just experimental. Eventually it's going to be really important, but right now it's not. But now it seems like what's happened is their main profit center, which is Starlink, and they need to get Starlink up and they need to justify all of these terminals that they're building and they need to justify this massive ca cash outlay that they're doing. All of those things are dependent on Starship now. And that's a little bit frightening. <laughs> that's something that I think was new to everybody. And I don't think people have really pinged on this enough. If they can't get Starship up, that means they can't launch version two of these satellites, or at least not profitably. They can't launch enough of them. And if they can't launch enough of these satellites, then they are pretty well screwed because they can't make money on Starlink. And Starlink in the future is kind of their main profit center, which will drive their ability to be able to keep building starships and go to the moon and go to Mars and do what Elon wants to do. So what's going on with the Raptor 2 engine? Well, nobody knows exactly. Of course, Elon does, but <laughs> he's not telling anybody. But it probably has something again like with the Model 3 when they were going through production hell, it probably has to do with the fact that there are little issues all the way through the production line that are slowing things down. So I don't know if it's raw materials coming in that they're not getting the, the quality of raw materials they need, if they're just missing a bolt, right? If they have a bolt that doesn't fit properly, if they're not able to make these parts large enough. Uh, one of the things, you know, the major advantage of like this Model Y over a Model 3 is that the whole back end of the interior of the car is one giant stamp. So obviously in order for Raptor 2 to be able to be produced at high quantities, which it really needs to be able to do because between the Super Heavy and the Starship, we're looking at, I think about 30 sea level engines and three vacuum engines. Now the vacuum engines are a whole separate thing, so don't worry about it, but 30 sea level engines have to be produced per vehicle and if he wants to be producing hundreds of these starships and super heavies he needs to have thousands of these engines and that's an awful lot of a big ask nobody has produced engines in high quantity ever before and of course they have to be able to produce these things in high quantity and relatively rapidly in order to make it economic because again the economies of scale will bring down the price of building these engines as they build more of them so the problem is that we've got starlink which is their main future profit center well above Falcon or Falcon Heavy or anything because they can generate recurring revenue. They need that in order to make SpaceX viable long term. In order to have that happen, they need Super Heavy and Starship to be flying as soon as possible. In fact, every two weeks by the end of 2022, apparently, according to the email. And if they don't get that, they've got serious financial problems. Now, the question is, do we believe Elon's email or do we believe Elon's tweet? Elon's email is an internal thing. He's got an audience that, you know, they're going home for Thanksgiving holidays and he's probably also pissed off because there was a bunch of senior management that left and apparently they were not telling him the truth and so he's mad. So he's got that. He's also got the fact that he was going to take the weekend off and it's the holidays and all of this stuff. So he's a little bit, you know, high up there in terms of the emotional intensity of the you know, the outcome of this email. Whereas we have a tweet, which is a much more public consumption kind of thing where he's like, you know, it could happen, but don't worry about it too much. So which one of those things do we believe? You know, as with most things, it's probably the in between those two. It's unlikely it's as bad as what Elon was saying in his email over the Thanksgiving week because he was probably pretty upset about the whole thing. And again, might have been a little bit overreacting as he looked at the line and said, oh my gosh, you know, sometimes when you first look at a problem, you're like, you can't figure out how it's going to work. But over time, you're like, okay, it's not quite as bad as I thought it was. Anyway, and then we get the tweet, and the tweet is like, don't worry about it. It could happen, but it's very unlikely that it'll happen. But of course, that's something that's for public consumption, and so he's going to downplay things a little bit. So more than likely, it's in between those. It's not going to happen. It's not not going to happen. It's like in the middle. But that's still a little bit worrying. And it really does mean that this Raptor 2 is super, super important. The really fascinating part, of course, is that Raptor is not going to be the engine that will take us to Mars, as Elon has said in a tweet. And I think that's really cool. I have a name. I really, really want the engine to be called Osprey. He's doing Birds of Prey for the engines, and Ospreys are like land and sea animals. And so I think it would be really cool if the engine was called the, the you know, the SpaceX Osprey. 
story. And it would be going between Earth and the vacuum and Mars. And so it's multiple different types of environments. That seems like a really appropriate name. So we'll see. I can at least throw my name into the hat and see if anybody is picking it up. So anyway, don't worry over much, but also remember that only the paranoid survive. So you should worry a little bit about SpaceX. And by the way, if anybody's watching this and hasn't watched Warren Redlick's take on this, he said that he or his friends, and I guess I'm one of them because I'm on the list, would be happy to buy SpaceX shares from anybody privately who wanted to sell right now. So <laughs> I'll put my name into that too. I'd be, I will be happy to take the chance with some SpaceX shares if anybody wants to sell them. Again, they're not public, so you can't buy them on the market. But if anybody happens to want to sell them, I'd be interested in buying. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it fun and thought provoking. Again, I apologize about the supercharger thing. It's actually going down because it's charging at a lower rate right now. But I know it's annoying to have that wine in the background, but I literally have no other time today. So I hope you will forgive me that. Anyway, if you do enjoy the video, definitely please like it because that helps other people to find it and also consider subscribing for more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. I thank you all so much for your support. I really do. It means the world to me. And thank you also for the suggestion for this video. I had several people on Patreon private message me and say like, hey, you should do one about the Raptor. So here's my video about the Raptor. There you go. And if you're interested in some awesome merch, check out the link in the description. We've got the Tesla Bot t-shirt, which is super popular these days. Don't mess with Tesla. Lots of other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description and help the channel out. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200 and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $2,300. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. And finally, don't forget, we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is knows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.